Since the pandemic, the pace of structural reforms has picked up further. Measures like labor reforms, the PM Gati Shakti, a national asset monetization plan, a production-linked incentive scheme to boost domestic manufacturing, higher investment limits for small businesses, power sector reforms, and aggressive disinvestment targets. The scope and scale of economic reform has been really fast-paced, and this will drive productivity improvements and a continued growth in capital accumulation. Reform is going to be a key pillar that will propel the fundamentals of India's outperformance in the coming decades. Crucially, in the past few years, we have also... Hundreds of millions of people have been lifted out of poverty, while health outcomes have also improved significantly. India implemented one of the most successful COVID vaccination programs in the world. This strong foundation sets the stage for a renewed vision for India at 2047. If you are to look at a size of a $20 trillion economy, our per capita GDP would be at $13,000, six times the current level. If we can raise our growth trending rate to 8% from 6.5%, we can achieve a $30, $30 trillion economy. It will be 10 times the current size. But it is not only about the quantum of growth and the size of our economy. To fulfill our Prime Minister's vision of becoming a developed nation as we celebrate our 100th year of independence, we will need to be deliberate in ensuring that the fruits of our long-term growth potential reaches every citizen. So what does success look like for India at 2047? We can propose a few metrics. First, in terms of air pollution, if we can reduce it to one-fourth of its current levels, and also produce universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water. That will go a long way. Second, half of our labor force should be comprised of women. Third, we can eliminate the malnutrition and move towards a coverage ratio equivalent of more than one doctor per thousand people from 0.5 currently through strengthening the primary care system as well as harnessing the digital transformation technology. And four, in terms of education, success in education should shift from a focus on educational attainment to educational outcome. I think all of this is achievable and within our reach. To realize the potential of our vast talent pool, we will need to transform our skilling, research infrastructure, as well as bring more women into the workforce. The capacity and quality of our skilling infrastructure should be scaled up to at least 10 million people per year. It will be important to develop dual approaches where we have both classroom as well as industry-based learning and internships. We must also empower our research and higher education institutions to level up in the quantity and quality of our research output as India seeks to become a global leader in AI, machine learning, advanced manufacturing, and next generation of products and services beyond the cloud and IoT. To bring more women into the workforce, we can create a leading edge, digitally integrated national child care network. By 2047, more than half of Indians will likely be living in the cities from the current 35%. We will need not only smart cities, but cities that are built for the future, livable, green, and less polluted, while also being robust engines of 
job generation. Focusing on sectors like tourism can have a multiplier effect. Focus on tourism can improve the country's connectivity, sanitation, infrastructure links, creation of jobs, and valuable foreign exchange. I have traveled around the world, but nowhere have I seen as many incredible historical sites and landmarks like we have in India. Upgrading our facilities and infrastructure, training the informal workers in the sector, and using digital to deliver a seamless customer experience can dramatically transform India's tourism industry. It is a tremendous opportunity that is ripe for takeoff. Then coming to healthcare, our goal should be to ensure universal, affordable healthcare access through a strong focus on primary healthcare. We can move towards a coverage ratio equivalent of more than one doctor per thousand people by harnessing the digital transformation strategies using our existing medical resources. Ensuring interoperable digital health records will be key, as will reimagining the health workforce to make more efficient use of our limited resources. For instance, through the introduction of new cadres of health workers outside of doctors and nurses. In addition, building a leading care network for the elderly will be key as India's above 65 age population doubles between 2015 and 2035. From being the diabetes and cancer capital of the world, India can become a champion of preventive and digital healthcare delivery and set a benchmark in the world. We can also deepen and broaden the structure of our private sector. Beyond large conglomerates and high-tech startups, we can extend support to the growth of small and medium businesses throughout the country. From around 12% employment in small and medium businesses currently, we should be targeting a level of 35 to 45% by 2047 at par with the developed nations as a benchmark. I believe such a vision is very much achievable by 2047. Firstly, because of the uniqueness of the present moment. Second, because of the massive potential of technology to address many of our most persistent developmental challenges and the unbelievable rate at which India has been adopting digital technologies, both in the private and public sector. We have the right human capital. We have the scale. We just need to make the right investments and focus on specific areas to achieve these results. In addition, the major pandemic themes, especially accelerated digital adoption, the rebalancing of the global supply chains, and the environmental sustainability or energy transition reinforce India's fundamental growth potential. From work to health to education to shopping, for three years and more now, the internet has penetrated ever further into our daily lives. Advances in AI, cloud computing, and data technology have raced forward. Proprietary AI and big data are already separating top-tier businesses from the rest. Soon, all businesses will become data and AI businesses. No sector can escape the data revolution. For some, new technologies appending industries and replacing jobs is a concern. But for India, it is a uniquely placed wave that will, leave, that will lead India into the future. Our tech strength means we are well placed to continue reimagining our national blueprint using digital.